dearest delegates, student officers, and UN advisors, friends, and guests. The world has undergone unprecedented change in the past century. Our society has changed in every respect, from the technology we use on a daily basis to the kinds of governments ruling our nations. Without a doubt, the world is a healthier, more educated, and more democratic place for humanity, including for those in the bottom billion. At the moment, most nations across the globe are celebrating the most stable and developed periods in their respective histories. Healthcare and health information are accessible to the bottom million strung across the globe, from the Syria to the Waqsha. The World Health Organization, with the help of the international community, has assisted millions of women in making important life choices, from reducing risk factors during pregnancy to clarifying the nutritional requirements of our bodies. The most connected society in human history, we have engaged in civic relations with millions of others, even people thousands of miles away, using technology that didn't exist even 10 years ago. It takes a matter of seconds for one person to broadcast information to billions around the world. With the internet, civilians from Homs to Vistata have been able to report on the situations in Syria and Libya in real time, a feat that mainstream news stations better by government minders and protocol, could never accomplish. With the internet, individual groups can cast a light on grossly underreported issues, such as the blight facing victims of the Lord's Resistance Army, and can effectively pressure powerful nations like the United States of America into expanding its military mission in Central Africa to locate and capture criminals like Joseph Cohen. Despite such progress in the past century, some of the bottom million are worse off today than they were in the 1970s, before the invention of the internet, before the end of apartheid in South Africa, and before the human genome was mapped. While some nations like China seem to be developing at an astronomical pace, others are falling behind. Liberia has gone from being one of the most stable governments in Africa to having 85% of its people not living but suffering below the poverty line. In North Korea, sitting on a peninsula with boundless economic potential, rice that is needed in the city sits rotting in the countryside, while manufactured goods the country people need never leave the city. Though India is developing on paper as the middle class is expanding, purchasing cheap automobiles, and moving to gated communities, millions continue to struggle in slums like Chandmari and Dharavi, where disease, water shortages, and crime run rampant. Elsewhere, Politicians who run on platforms of liberty, justice, and equality unscrupulously blind their pockets with bribes from multinational corporations, leaving children with hearts of gold with lungs contaminated by soot and, and pesticides and carcinogens. 2.5 billion people contract HIV AIDS every year, many of whom to be marginalized by society, barred from accessing even basic medical treatment. In the Maghreb, Civilians in former academic powerhouses like Timbuktu are witnessing the irreversible destruction of mosques, libraries, and homes. Most recently, residents of Goma have been left in bewilderment as to a ragtag group of 1,000 scrawny rebels naming themselves the March 23 movement were able to defeat a national army backed by the most costly UN peacekeeping mission to date. The world has evidently undergone considerable change over the past century eradicating diseases, toppling tyrannical regimes, and inventing technologies that facilitate discourse amongst our diverse societies. Yet, we have faced countless pitfalls at the same time, including rampant poverty, irreversible ecological damage, and political instability. The kind of pitfalls that convince many of us to lose hope and to give up. Yet, Nelson Mandela, statesman and champion of civil rights, who was jailed for 27 years by the apartheid regime, told us that we should never give up. Fighting for equal rights for blacks, yet facing failure after failure for decades, Mandela realized that once the white supremacists were ousted in 1994, that there is no easy walk to freedom anywhere, and that many of us will have to pass through the valley of the shadow of death again and again before we reach the mountaintop of our desires. As an organization, we may be tempted to give up on raising the bottom billion, disheartened by the tragic news that we learn of on a day-to-day -day basis. The truth may hurt. Either we can run away from it, or we can learn from it. And the ugly truths we face today may, face some, may, may tempt some of us.
to run away and abandon our plans and aspirations. But the zealous determination that has gotten humanity this far, that has landed a man on the moon, eradicated smallpox, and connected the world, will let us learn and without a doubt bring us to the mountaintop of our desires where prosperity, justice, and equality prevail. So delegates, the question is not whether we will raise the bottom billion, just the how and when have yet to be set in stone. Thank you.